Hey guys, so recently I had some questions about shellac and French polishing my bows. Um, and I kind of just wanted to share with you the process that I go through when I'm finishing a bow and shellacking it. Um, shellac can be a little frustrating to deal with, um, and it just takes a little bit of practice uh, and a lot of patience when you're finishing your bow. Uh, of course, I haven't mastered the art of shellac and I'm sure there's a hundred ways that you can do this but this is one that kind of works for me right now um I may modify it next week so <laughs> you never know so the things we're gonna need are more coffee mineral oil grain alcohol baby food jars shellac flakes a linen shirt in zero aught steel wool. Okay, so we have our baby food jar, and the first step is to put the desired amount of shellac in. Um, okay, so the shellac we did get in the jar is about this much. Here we have the alcohol in the jar, and it's over the level of the shellac. There are different kind of consistencies with the shellac, but I always start out with a pretty light shellac, and I think that's what this will be. Um, you can always add more alcohol or more shellac to get the consistency that you want, but I recommend starting out thinner. Next step, just give it a good shake and leave it for a while. Then come back in about 30 minutes maybe, give it another little shake. And just continue to do that until all of the shellac is dissolved and those little flakes are gone. If your shellac is old, this can take a long time. If it's too old, the shellac won't dissolve at all and you'll need to repurchase your shellac. And magically, here it is, the finished product. So once the shellac is all mixed up, we can look at our project. Um, sometimes the wood has very large pores and this kind of makes it difficult to layer enough shellac in them. Some people use some very thin super glue and go over the finished product and then sand most of it off, leaving just the just enough to fill the pores. You can do this or you can just put on coat after coat of, after coat of shellac and see if that takes care of the pore issues. So another thing that I like to do with my bows is raise the grain. Um, for that, we're just gonna need some water and we're gonna dampen our working surface. After it's wet, we're gonna let it dry and that should raise the grain. I'll sand it one more time after this with 400 grit. What I have here is just a white linen shirt um, they recommend linen for French polishing, so that's what I use. And I just cut up a strip of this and use it for my French polishing pad. There are a few different ways that you can use the linen as you French polish. One of my favorite ways is to hold it um, like this around the fingers here and here and held down under the middle finger. That way it gives you some good tension on the top. Um, this was how I was taught to shellac um, and finish instruments and it's just a very effective method um, you can use it like this and just continue moving and um, it does very well the other method is um, putting a cotton ball inside of more linen this is a really dirty piece and i have to replace it um, which i have this for but this also is a good method it's if you can't hold it like this or it's just too fickly you can use this method as well, in circles or side to side, like that. Um, yeah, you can call this a pad or a tampon, um, but it is very useful as well. And I always keep all of my linen inside its own little baby food jar so that it keeps clean and it keeps all of those particulates and dust matter out. Just like that. And here it is nice and clean. The next step is application. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this linen here and my shellac. And I'm just gonna dunk the end of the linen in the shellac, pick up a little bit, not so much, and then just give the project a nice coat of shellac. Just like that. And then I'll wait until this dries and we'll add another coat. 
Okay, so after the first layer of shellac is dry, I can see that the pores still aren't full, so I'm going to give it another coat. A quick side note, it's really important to make sure that you put it on in thin layers. Thick coats won't dry as quickly and you'll end up with a very uneven layer of shellac at the end. This is after about four coats of shellac. I'm going to now take my Zero Ot Steel Wool and a little bit of mineral oil and take down some of these irregularities and try to even out the shellac. So after I've taken down the shellac with the steel wool, I can still see that I have some open pores that need to be filled and the surface is not um, even yet. So before I do that, I'm going to take care to clean my work surface of all of the steel wool and clean my project, otherwise it will get into the wet shellac. So this is after six or seven coats. I just took it down with the steel wool so you can see it has a little bit of that uh, dull texture going on and now we're going to French polish it. Okay, so next I get my French polishing rag ready. I add a little bit of varnish or shellac that we mixed up earlier. Um, I already put some alcohol on it so it's damp. And just a really little bit of mineral oil. And you want it tacky, um, not wet, just kind of moist cool to the touch kind of, and then start shellacking, or French polishing rather. So you want a consistent motion like this. You don't want to stop at one end um, because it will imprint what you're working on. So you want just enough mineral oil to kind of lubricate it and make it easy to move, um, but you're actually dissolving the top layer of varnish as you're doing this, or shellac as you're doing this, and smoothing it out and that's what you're hoping to create. So a very kind of like, this is exaggerated, but you don't want the ends to stick as you change directions. Otherwise you're gonna end with the imprinting of the linen onto your work. So that's looking pretty good. You can see there's slight variation still. So I'm gonna maybe let it dry, still wool it down just a little bit more and then sh French polish it again. All right, I took it down one more time. So let's French polish it again. So this is looking pretty good. I mean, it's an unfinished piece of wood. It's just a stick, but I was able to fill the pores and get a nice shine on it that's fairly like flat and fairly nice looking. Um, yeah, it's gonna take a lot more coats than you'd think, especially if you have a very porous piece of wood and a lot more time drying than you would think. Every time I put on a coat, you gotta wait for it to dry, then even it out again with a little bit of that steel wool, and then put on another coat, wait for that to dry. It's just a process that takes a while if you want an even even finish to it. This is this isn't bad. I mean for like for just a stick it's not looking bad. So thank you for making it to the end of the video. I hope that these kind of little tricks and things help with your shellacking and French polishing endeavors. And yeah, it's a pretty simple process, just takes a little bit of time. And I wish you luck on all of your projects, bows or instruments or furniture or whatever you have going. Anyway, ciao ciao.